There's an incredible disconnect between reality and what we're fed as reality, such as um, this little electronic box that millions upon billions of homes have now. And we now digest all of our reality from this little electronic tube. None of what we're actually getting in this tube is reality other than the fact that we're watching uh, television. That's it. That's the only portion of that that's actually real. But what we do is we, we lose ourselves then. We almost become too identified. We forget that we're even existent, so we are identified with everything that we're seeing, and this becomes our reality. And we forget that not only is this cherry-picked information, but above and beyond all that, no one even stops to think that this is somebody's interpretation of what happened in an area. So everything that we're getting is literally somebody else's creation. It's a manufactured idea that's put into this little tube and then projected into us as reality. And that now is the basis for how we act in our society. So the way we dress, the way we talk, what we do, what we're afraid of, what we're attracted to, what we want to drive, uh, the, the house that we want, the money, all these things are driven by somebody else's perception. They're driven mostly by wants of other people and they uh, arrived at those wants from wants from other people and it all comes back to uh, really just the fundamental basis that none of this is reality it's manufactured it's um, it's not really pertinent to our life it's not really profound there's really no importance to it we're just applying value to it because all of these things the clothing and the cars and the job and, and the money and the bank account and why we want this job we don't even understand why anymore because we relate all of our wants all of our desires to what these other people want and what they desire and if you actually get to the core of it we don't even truly want these things we just want the other people around us to see that we have what they want because that gives us a um, a measure of control or measure of power and it all boils down to a level of security and that's all that all of this really is is the fact that people are following these fashions they don't understand they're following these ideals that they don't understand they're doing it because they want to fit into some identity that they're uh, eventually creating for themselves to be the most secure the most powerful the most prominent the most beautiful the most affluent person in that field so that everybody else around will give that person support because they want to be near you and that's all it is we just want this closeness we want this uh, connection with people and unfortunately now we're, we are contriving it we're forcing people to want a connection with us for means that really have no basis in love no basis in real relationships so all of our relationships are based upon power and fear and based upon uh, manipulation and lies and trying to get this and trying to get that and none of it's true interaction anymore. Science is great with all the beautiful technologies but many of the problems you're trying to solve we created. If things stay as usual, if business stays as usual then we have about 100 years of life on this planet. But if you think there is hope, then we have to start taking action right now. Indeed, if heavy industry and the genetic manipulation of the Earth environment is allowed to progress at its current rate, then the only life that will be able to survive on Earth will need to be of a very robust nature. Such life would be transhuman by necessity. Biology divides life into three kingdoms, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Bacteria and archaea are simple organisms with no subcellular compartments. Eukarya are complex with defined cell compartments and internal organelles, mini organs like mitochondria that make DNA and energy for the cell. Plants, animals, and humans are eukaryotic, as are fungi and slime molds. The archaea are the hardiest of the life forms. They're able to withstand grinding pressure, heat, acidity, and alkalinity. They can live in volcanoes, geysers, and the ice shelf. Now the materials appearing within these filaments are as tough as archaea. They look like bacteria and they self-replicate. And natural fibers would be classified 
as fungal in the domain of eukaryotes. But these fibers contain forms from the other two groups inside them. You're looking at a tubular fiber with self-replicating internal elements resembling bacteria and behaving like archaea. That does not happen in the natural world. They are designed to endure almost anything. In the social and political climate of the 21st century, mankind is truly facing some very great challenges. Many of them made all the more difficult due to the fact that they are challenges that go mostly unnoticed by the vast majority of people. The vast majority of people in the world today only perceive the world the way it appears on the surface. However, the real truth is that the world that we live in today is actually very different to that which most people perceive it to be. Because just below the surface of everyday life, beneath the social and political distractions of the reality offered to the masses via their television, there exists another world. The world that most people perceive is simply a facade. It is an illusionary reality where nothing is what it seems. It is a world where our social system is designed to foster division, our education system is designed to conceal knowledge. Our health system is designed to create sickness. Our financial system is designed to steal wealth. Our community is designed to create disunity. And our very civilization itself is wholly uncivilized. We live in a world where 2% of the population controls 98% of the global resources while the other 98% of people are left to compete against each other in order to gather some small fraction of the other 2% that is left to them in order to support their lives and their families. In fact, the world of today is so disjointed and so out of balance that the most amazing part of it all is that there are actually people who cannot seem to see it. And this is because the systems of control that have been put in place to blind people to the true realities of our world have been very cleverly and very meticulously constructed. Though much of our society may appear to be free on the surface, if the truth be known, mankind is actually far from free. We are simply free range. For the world of modern times is actually a very controlled place. But the situation is not wholly lost, for the simple truth is that mankind has allowed their servants to take over the mansion, and these public servants have worked and are continuing to work to steal everything of value that they can from the people, while gradually enslaving the world to a set of rules of their own contrivance. Legislation that has been cleverly designed to remove actual law from the planet and impose in its stead the will of individuals. When one puts all the pieces of the puzzle together on the table, the chemtrails, the harp arrays that are appearing all over the planet, the promotion of wireless technology, the smart meters, the introduction of repressive legislation such as Codex Alimentarius, the mandatory use of Monsanto genetically modified food, the destruction of the water table, the introduction of brain inhibiting toxins such as fluoride into people's diets, it becomes quite evident that the ruling factions on this planet are actively engaged in the genetic modification of all life on this planet in order to further the transhumanist agenda. It is being done quite deliberately and quite purposefully, and it is being done with neither the knowledge nor the consent of the vast majority of mankind. And all the evidence needed to support this conclusion is right before your eyes, if people would simply take the time to look.
The truth is that everything we are facing is visible in plain sight, and so is its inevitable conclusion. It's just that people tend to focus on their own little symptom and never step back to view the entire structure of our world holistically, and thus our response to the problem is compartmentalized, essentially rendering it ineffective. And this is all done by design, because in addressing their respective symptoms, people are trained to believe they have to work within the parameters of the system, rather than addressing the actual root of the problem. Every single government that exists anywhere in the world today is currently operating in breach of the trust that has been granted to it by the people of their nation. And this is true regardless of which country we are talking about. It is true whether it is a government consisting of duly elected politicians claiming to act in the best interest of the people, whether they are acting out of greed or whether they are simply acting through their belief that the system is real. It is true whether it is a military dictatorship falsely declaring a self-granted right to dictate what is good for others. It is true whether it consists of a monarchy that has declared its divine right to rule and supposedly care for its subjects. Because the reality is that every single government or ruling body in the world today is abusing the power granted to it by the people of the nation it governs. Exhibit A. The Earth. The remedy is for mankind to re-establish themselves as who and what they are, because the only ones who have any chance of addressing this situation are the people themselves. The first thing to be done is for people to notice their surroundings and to realize that very simple alternatives to the wantonly destructive direction of our current system exist right now. Carbon, at the nanoscale, is actually transparent and flexible. And when it's in this form, if I combine it with a polymer and affix it to your window, when it's in its colored state, it will reflect away all heat and light. And when it's in its bleached state, it will let all the light and heat through and any combination in between. To change its state, by the way, takes two volts for a millisecond pulse. And once you've changed its state, it stays there until you change its state again. The nanomaterial, two nanomaterials, a detector and an imager, and it takes all the infrared available at night, converts it into an electron with a space of two small films, this is taking infrared radiation, wavelength, converting it into an electron. What if we combined it with this? Suddenly, you've converted energy into an electron on a plastic surface that you can stick on your window. But because it's flexible, it can be on any surface whatsoever. The power plant of tomorrow is no power plant. I can generate energy cleanly, efficiently, and cheaply right where I am. It's my energy. And if I don't need it, I can convert it back up on the window to energy, light, and beam it, line of sight, to your place. And for that, I do not need an electric grid between us. The grid of tomorrow is no grid. And energy, clean, efficient energy, will one day be free 